Let's start with the week one, where we're going to show you what will be the right pricing methodology as well as using the well-known method as well as the pricing. When we're doing the pricing strategy, how do they, how do we going to start? We can start from one thing, which is the business strategy. When you have business strategy, that's going to talk about what would be the long-term direction for your company, what is the KPI you have to achieve this year, and what is the target positioning in the market. You can start to write up your marketing strategy. And from that, marketing strategy is including with the customer targeted, how do you going to segment that customer, as well as the positioning, and also the distribution channel that you have. After you're done writing your marketing strategy, you can start to thinking about pricing strategy. In pricing strategy, we mainly focusing on two things. One is the concept pricing. When I'm talking about the concept pricing, we talk about different kind of areas, depend on the product and the service that you have. You can talking about how do you go into, into upsell your customer, making sure that they are paying more for your company when the times go by. Or talking about the new product launching in each quarter. For example, you can see an example of Grab Taxi. Grab have been launching the product quite consistently, starting from the taxi as well as the messenger. What they are doing in their pricing strategy is they are trying to focus on in each particular area and making sure that they are getting more money off you when the times go by. Another part that people always talk about is how to respond to the competitor. We are using the term tactical pricing. Tactical pricing is the response to get an opportunity out of the market and the threat from the competitor reaction. For an example, you might also aware of the campaign called Eleven Elevens that have been launching in every eleven of November in each year. If you are the people who are working in e-commerce industry, you might know that everyone is launching that campaign. So the decision for you is, are you going to play with the campaign followed by other people or you're going to being the one who have been leaving it out in that the discount moment or the campaign that they have for 11 November. So that's kind of example. Moving forward of that is thinking about what would be the right way to looking at how do they price the product. Earlier or in the past, we were so much focusing on working on the thing called cost bed pricing or we know it as a traditional way where we starting having one particular product you define the cost of the product that relevance and also in this case I just giving you an example of the cost of 300 US dollar from that cost you make up the price while giving the max up margin that you want let's say for example so I'm going to sell the phone which have including the solar battery and I want a margin of 50% so I should sell at the price of 450 US dollar. From that point, I'm going to see how do I communicate the price of 450 dollar by adding the value to that price and sell it to the customer. But in the new way or innovation way, we talk about something different, which is called value based pricing. When you talk about the first thing that you need to focus is what is the customer pain point that you have, and then you're looking at what kind of the value that I can give in the market. I'm just giving you an, the same example of the phone solar cell. I'm saying that if I have been launching the phone with solar cell battery, what happens is people don't have to change battery over time and people can save up to 100 US dollar. For the price that I'm going to sell, it's going to be the reference price of the phone in market at 700 US dollar plus 100 US dollar, which is the price of changing the phone then you get a price of 800 US dollar. What that 800 US dollar, that is called willingness to pay for the customer, which is going to be the maximum price that you can sell in that market. You might looking at selling something lower than 800 baht, which is in this case is 799 US dollar. And then you might have cost of 300 US dollar, and that's the margin that you have left when you selling the product. So in summary, when you talk about the value based pricing, we're talking about communicate the right value to your customer by looking at reference competitor or reference product rather than looking at the cost plus margin. That kind of the model you'll be talking at. Just to give you another summary, this is 
going to be the cost of next best alternative you have in the market for your product or product. Add with the value of performance differentiator to get that value bit pricing. This is very important part as you're looking at one of the biggest example. This is Mona Lisa picture. Nobody know exactly what kind of the reference file they are using, but people knowing that this is not the cost price model. They are rather using value based pricing where they are focusing on the value of that painting. The next one that I'm going to talk about is when you set up a price, how do you going to collect all the instrument elements in the price coming into the picture where we talk about the thermometer. The thermometer starting from the cost of goods sold, you have product price and then you're looking at what is the willingness to pay of the price and the willingness to pay is changing over the time by two main factors which is the market affords and the price of substitute products. In some of the market you might have the government forcing where you're going to create the price ceiling for and the price for which is the maximum price and the minimum price that you can sell in the market based on the regulation from the government. When you have that price together, you put it in thermometer, you will see what kind of margin that is maximum margin for you. So next section, we I will going to talk more about price for and price ceiling.